Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is the EUS Challenger Series number 10, I believe, and this is the second game in the best of three between Reason Gaming and Copenhagen Wolves. We are currently 1-0 and in the favor of Copenhagen Wolves after they took a fairly protracted game against Reason Gaming. We will see if they can manage to correct that, but there's actually action going on already because I was loading into the game, Pulse. What's going on? Yeah, Copenhagen... Uh, Co Copenhagen Wolves looking for this aggression into the jungle of Reason Gaming now in the red corner themselves and Reason Gaming in the blue corner respectively and uh, well they're just going to cycle around play down some walls and completely just back on off Reason Gaming though still sticking around maybe just looking to contest it if Copenhagen Wolves stuck around but those extra walls will give a lot of early game presence and pings go down onto where they think the walls went as well uh, they might even plant down some pink wards to uh, clear these ones out. Yeah, looks like they are planning planning around at least not knowing whether Ku is intending to go for an, a gank on that mid lane. But um, Ku is actually standing next to his Wraith camp at the moment. Uh, he's actually not going to do that. However, they will be able to detect, assuming Ku starts at that red buff, they will be able to detect if he's going for an immediate gank on bottom lane but other than that they're not going to get a lot of information there however they have put also a ward at the banana brush near mid lane so if jarvan looks to gank mid well we'll know but if they know but they'll also know if he looks to gank top because he they will actually not see him try and gank mid and if you start at red buff which they know he's doing then that will just mean they can infer pretty much everything about his jungle path here he will however probably be spending quite a lot of time this game defending that top lane flat. Yeah, and uh, this swap of pounds have come out, so, well, we've already spoken about it before in Champions League, but it's worth reiterating. So, Vlad has a really good 1 versus 2 lane. When he gets a couple of levels under his belt, maybe level uh, 4 or 5, he can start out sustaining the, the lane, so he should be able to just stick up there and be absolutely okay. However, the invade's coming in from Ku and Kazmich, pushing Shook out of his jungle. It's really down to see if Osanu can do enough to counter jungle this one out. Smite comes down, Ku picks it up. And they really can't fight this one out. Youngbrook still heading around the corner though. He wants to maybe make something happen. But two versus three scenario virus also comes up. Shook coming around the corner. Find himself Bimbo 8. But right now Shook is just trying his best to... In fact it looks like he might be just taking a very direct route to the blue buff. Ku is also coming in from the side as well from that blue buff from the own jungle. And uh, I was going to say this is probably like the most obvious invade I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the effect of having a 1v2 lane. I mean, well, you, if you've got two people ready to respond in an emergency situation, then you can invade as obviously as you like, because if they try and stop you, it's a you know a 2v3 or a, a 1v2 situation. So, uh, yeah, perfectly happy to go ahead and do that. That probably is going to be a little bit more efficient for Ku, because he has had to like take less route, uh, less, less walking out of his own kind of standard route here. Uh, but... Shook won't be too unhappy, and he is in the mid lane, actually getting spotted out here. Charm goes down, and the damage following up. Uh, red buff getting in from Ku, and he will be backing out shortly. Yeah, and uh, had they, if they did pick up that kill, that um, that blue buff would have been for naught. But Mozilla in the top lane, again, farming this one out. 6 CS to 23 from Vayne. I'm going to go ahead and say he's not winning the top lane just yet. And uh, he will be able to sustain himself. It's really down to see if Ku can get some ganks off, help him get to that stage. Because another thing we said was he's going to need some help to get to that point. But with all this action around the buffs, hasn't really had the opportunity to do so. So, a uh, very brief little mechanics chat about Vlad. Uh, ooh, there could be stuff going on, looking around that mid lane. And I will pass it over to you if that does happen. But uh, a little very brief mechanics chat. You can actually, on Vladimir, as I learned from Soviet Pride, one of our friends uh, the other day, at level, uh, I think it was three, you can actually keep up, no, level four, you can get Tides of Blood up to four stacks and keep it there if you are very, very good at your transfusion timings. That will be difficult in this 1v2 situation, but it's very much possible to do it at a lower level much earlier still. So uh, Vlad will start to get his sustain going pretty strongly soon, and in the uh, bottom lane, aggression coming down. Yeah, Q looking for this sort of semi-tower dive, already chunked down Jungbook to about 20% HP. Ice Shard comes down, they are also pushing out this wave, and Nautilus is coming out. So, well, he will try and save the Jungbook, but not going to be fast enough. Glacial Path comes down, and First Blood is picked up by Q. Nautilus is still on his way, but with the mini wave hitting the tower, Q can just walk on out. Did the claw just disappear? 
I thought it I mean, looked maybe like it. when she died, but I thought it disappeared like before she'd even died because of the knockup or something bizarre like that. But regardless, that bottom tower is actually being pressured really, really hard. And he's going to get pushed down very, very fast. Mozilla in the top lane taking a bit of damage, but he's going to keep that tower up longer, I think, than Shook can manage in this bottom lane. Yeah, currently three versus, uh, well, three versus one, but the Saddlepot coming in from Jungbook as well, hoping to keep up the throat just for a little longer. They are trying their best to stall this one out. Of course, the swap-up did come in from uh, Reason Gaming, so they are looking to take down that turret faster than their opponents of Copenhagen Walls. But at this uh, at this time, the Teleport might have actually just turned that in the other favour, but nope, they will be pushing the wave back again. So both of these towers on top and bot will be uh, on critical HP, so it's really down to see who can pick up the first tower and then swap up these lanes, because that's uh, the ultimate objective of these lane swap-ups. So right now, Reckless is 49 farm, and... It doesn't seem like this swap-up is really favouring Reason Gaming just yet. No, and it's actually going to be the top tower falling down first. Uh, Vlad, having run out of pots, was not able to end up uh, doing that well. However, he will now be able to go into kind of full push mode and just farm himself up into a beast because Vlad's late game is very, very strong and he will just be able to farm that up. Uh, for a very long time if he's able to just, you know, if they actually take this tower here, which presumably they will at some point, but they're just denying as much farm as they can while simultaneously taking down the tower. So, uh, Reckless going to back that now. Back now. Nah, back now. And Mozilla <laughs> is just going to engage push mode, shoving this out, and will most likely continue to shove it out pretty much for the next five, six minutes at least. Yeah, Tongue Twister is the worst when you're casting, because sometimes you'll have this sentence that you want to say, and realise you can't say it, and then try and commit like three or four times and just completely mess up. And uh, you, you get that result. So Bot Town will be also falling, and uh, Ku aggressing into that jungle. Blue Wolf will be up fairly shortly. Uh, well, I say that, or it, sh it should be, but the Red Buff has come up first, because they did, of course, start on those Red Buffs. They are moving around this area, and they are looking to pick up this kill onto Reckless, all of them just waiting in the wings. Not sure if the limiters have caught sight of them. I think a ping went down so they have indeed seen them. And Reckless is going to try his best to back off. Black and Drag comes down and surely going to fall. There's no way he can actually fight this one out and just takes it to the face. Yeah, piercing arrow coming out there, and that's going to mean that uh, should be a free dragon for Reason Gaming if that's what they choose to go for. They're going to take this blue buff out first and uh, clearing out the wards. Rise at this moment is not particularly strong. He's fairly low on mana, and I really don't think he's going to be able to do anything, but Bimbo is in trouble. Yeah, death charge over the wall, Ku. Well, tries to body block as much as he can, but in, fa in fact, just turns himself walk into, a, into just a focal walk point for the E. Yeah, exactly. All he needed to do was just take a sidestep, but in fact, secured the death of Bimbo Aid. That is, that is, <laughs> that is really quite unfortunate there. Uh, as it happens, actually, Exeter gets the blue buff as well, so that's really, a, you know, uh, that's a tour de force there, but... Uh, Nardius could be in trouble here, did get hooked. Let's we'll see if they go. Yes, yeah, Shook gets locked down with the flag and drag. Unlimited from the side there, along with Reckless. This is the Penta movement coming in from Copenhagen Wolf. Mozilla following up with the damage though, he's actually doing a lot in his own right. Kazmich overextends though completely. On the back side of his team, Flash comes down from Reckless. Exeter picks that one up. Youngbook over the wall. Glacial Path comes down. Um, three members of Reason Gaming so low. Frozen Tomb comes out. Hook comes over the wall, gets one of the melee minions. And this is enough for them to take Dragon. Yeah, and again, Reason Gaming there, having lost Bimbo A, having had that blue steel go so badly wrong, they should have actually maintained a slightly better awareness there. They did not think about the, uh, the fact that they couldn't go for that. But as it happens, Bimbo 8 may look to go for the counter counter steal here. Vlad is there as well. Yeah, and this three versus four scenario, one kill already goes down. Shook is there to follow up. Riptide comes out. Youngbook following up with the Circle of Frost as well. Mozilla pops into the Sanguine Pool. A uh, Glacial Path comes out once again. Another Flash comes out. This is such a this is such a messy team fight. Now with Kazmich and um, and Ku coming in as well. Shook dropping low along with Youngbook. Looks like they are going to force them back. And uh, well, I kind of hope that Recent Gaming go for Drake so there's another team fight breaking up again. Yeah, I think everyone's gonna just kind of back out, look to heal up. We may see them all return for that Drake, but uh, at least for the immediate, you know, next 30, 40 seconds or so, I wouldn't expect to see much pressure out on that. Uh, Mozilla could go to that top tower, but it is looking like Reason Gaming are gonna want to force this, but uh, a little bit unfortunate at the moment. Uh, Bimbo8 actually is going to uh, 
well potentially look for picks it's now a vision it's now a vision control game right now they are going to be wanting to put down as many pinks as they can and one of the things about Ari is that she's actually deceptively good in these situations. Cool, look at get aggressive there. Because she can punish people that are trying to get vision control. She can punish people that are trying to ward with a charm. And that can follow up into so many other things. Uh, Lysandra can do much the same and so can Nautilus with that dredge line. And the ice claw frozen tomb combo respectively. But it looks like Reason Gaming have got the control here and are going to look for this. Lysandra has teleport though. Yeah, both of these teams have amazing picking potential. Exler finds himself cooed, doesn't lock him down with the room prison. Chuck along the sidelines as well. Teleport now coming in from Youngbook. This is go time for the team of Copenhagen Wolves. Immediately popping down the as a prison, keeping them away from his team. Three people locked up in the Catechism so far. One for one trade. Youngbook immediately drops. Nardius gets hooked and with the anchor and the depth charge on that front line, immediately drops himself. Bimbo 8 gets caught by the struggling blow from Shuck. And Kazmitz just moving off to the side as well, but he's being forced into the territory of Copenhagen Wolves. And Rex is surely going to eventually finish this one up. And that was a really nicely timed teleport by Lysandra there. When they actually... Oh, yeah, and Kazmitz gets picked up. But um, regardless, really nice teleport there because it actually forced them to keep running because they didn't want to be pulling themselves into range of Lysandra. But because they all had to run at the same time and stay grouped up as a result, they were actually putting themselves into a very awkward spot where they were all just in a very dense clump. And you saw Jarvan trying to kind of break out of that at the last second by counter-engaging, but it didn't work out. They were clumped up. The backline was in danger and weren't able to put down damage everywhere they wanted to, whereas Reckless was free off the side to kind of clean everything up. Vlad going to go back to pushing that top lane now, though. So uh, that dragon being gone might actually favor Reason Gaming because I've got to say their team fighting thus far has not been as good as Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, Copenhagen Wolves are now edging ahead, and this is really bad for a reason because they have the better scaling team composition. I mean, um, Copenhagen Wolves have this protect the carry composition. Currently, two kills, um, one and three, with the uh, the triple dagger as well, and. Recent gaming are really strong in a sort of early mid-game scenario. They have land as well who will eventually scale up. But with Ari going for the triple Doran's ring once again, really looking for those mid-game fights. And if they're losing out on those as well by better positioning and better initiations coming in from Copenhagen Wolves, then they won't be able to transition to the late game as well as, say, Reckless will on that vein. That's very unfortunate. There is still somewhat of a saving grace, though, in that uh, if you count Varus's damage late game, it's not veined here. That is definitely a true fact. But with that Sona Aura, which is deceptively strong, incidentally, because it gives you flat AD, which is actually a very expensive stat, and at rank uh, max rank, it's quite a, quite a fair bit of it. And if you count the Hemoplague damage amplification, that's actually going to be putting Nardius not necessarily at the same level as Vayne, and he's also going to be, you know, a little bit uh, more vulnerable due to his lack of CC, uh, lack of ability to dodge out of there. But he will actually be as good of a tank shredder, probably, in that late game situation, assuming everything works out correctly for Reason Gaming. So they don't need to give up hope just because this game reaches the late game. However, it is still very, very difficult for them to deal with this, and they are going to have to deal with powerhouses like Ryze, who is only going to get stronger from now. Yeah, and he's also looking to pick up the uh, the Rod of Ages as well, and he's, he's, again, as you said, he's only going to get stronger. So Shook actually coming into this bot lane, seeing if he can uh, make something happen. But it looks like everyone's just going to back off. So again, going to begin a more passive stage in the game. This will suit Vladimir, but only on 59 farm at the stage in the game is not ideal at all. He really wants to be that champion who, you know, has those amazing CS score lines of like 220 minutes. But doesn't look like that's going to be the case this game. He is 2-1 though, so that will help him slightly. But he hasn't had the greatest of starts. And because uh, Ku was locked up in the early game, having to do other things in the jungle, he wasn't able to help him get to that stage where he could sustain himself and farm comfortably. Most of that actually getting aggressive onto Youngbook though. In fact, because Kaku is around the corner, Flag and Drag comes down. Venture path actually jukes out the way of it. Frozen Tomb comes out. Three versus one situation. And Shook coming from the side as well forces them back. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Exla is looking to push in the mid. But uh, Ryan doesn't have the greatest pushing potentials. So very good prediction there by both teams, actually. Young Buck throwing out the claw and teleported almost immediately, duking out the Ari charm. And then you actually had the return for Ku, who expected that to happen and got the Cataclysm down. But 
slippery as a fish and or, or indeed slippery as a piece of ice in a very warm weather but regardless young buck putting himself out of there did have to use his flash though yeah, at this stage he is uh, definitely melting. He will be recalling and uh, Shook will hold that lane as well. But Vladimir is kind of being left to his own devices and this is very, well, very good for reason game. He needs something to deal with the team fight scenario and having a fed Vlad or having a Vlad who at least does damage is one of, uh, one of those tools which will allow them to at least do some damage in those fights. At the moment, again, just everyone gone into their respective lanes and just started laning again and just... Um, which is kind of interesting, because we've already had the roaming phase. We had, like, the laning phase, roaming phase, and it's already gone back into the laning phase. Yeah, a little bit odd, but it's basically always like an extension of split pushing right now. You're just getting the dual lane doing the split pushing, which happens to be the same lane they were laning in. But uh, they are actually now at Reason Gaming, that is grouping up in the mid lane, getting aggressive on Exodus. Yeah, Q following up, but he's just tanking the turret aggro. It had he been dredged, but it doesn't matter because Hook from the uh, side as well from Unlimited. Uh, Crescendo comes out as well, along with the death charge. Locks up the entire team of Reason Game. They are still going deep for this one. One for one trade, but Reckless has now come into the scene. Kazmich just gets deleted, and the tower's dropping low, but Knowledge gets hooked by the dredge line. Now following up with Reckless as well. On the front lines, he knows he can do the damage. No one to lock him up either. Four for one trade. Horribly backfiring for Reason Gaming, just going a bit too deep. It's just one of those messy dives again. This happened several times to them now. They've gone for that aggressive dive, Koo at the head. Possibly, you know, you can understand why they go for it, but they don't back out when someone flashes. They don't back out afterwards, and it just backfires on them. That time, again, it was very, very close, but they just, just too... Uh, you, know, you can't do such an aggressive thing and then get caught out in a position where Reckless on Vayne is left with no CC left on the enemy team, nothing to stop him. And that is just a disaster because now 4-1 and 3 Vayne, 140 farm is the highest in the game. He's looking quite scary at the moment. Yeah, it's like Reason Gaming just setting up perfect scenarios for Reckless. It's like, well, we'll just dive, and then while we're underneath two turrets. In fact, in the mid lane there, we get the hook coming out from Olympta, another hook from Shuck as well, making sure that Ku stays locked up for at least five seconds, and he will just back off. But impressive CC coming in from Copenhagen Wolves, kind of a show of strength, just uh, what they can bring out when in a pinch when they need to protect Reckless. But... Uh, they were just set up, uh, setting up a perfect scenario. They were locked between two turrets, and then they also used all the CC, so Vayne could literally be on the front lines and be completely safe with the lifesteal and the extra damage he was putting out. Now, Copenhagen Wolves moving on to the Dragon. Ku is looking for the steal, but it would be very difficult for him to get out, and the Red Turret also falls. They are making something happen, but Ku looks for the... Well, uh, he looks for something. <laughs> Can you do a drive-by? Can you... uh, not from that angle, I don't think. Well, not from that angle, certainly, <laughs> but like in theory, are you able to do a drive-by steal with Jarvan? I, don't, I mean, I don't know. Uh, maybe someone in chat could inform me, but uh, I'd suspect not because I think you need a very long range jump to do that. But regardless, that might have been what he was attempting to try. Um, is it going to be farming out that top lane? And they did exchange the mid tower for that dragon. So, uh, oh, Crescendo and Bot. Yeah, never to get blocked up with the Cranes of Corruption. Death Charge comes out as well and follows up with the Staggering Blade from the uh, the dredge line and Rectus just goes huge, picking up two kills, looking to pick up the third as well. Looks like North has picked up one in the process and uh, again, scenarios are just completely backfiring. Reckless is just picking up the pieces. Extra on the sidelines, Bimbo 8 has to be very careful if he looks for this assassination. Yeah, this is just not looking good right now. At the moment, Ari might have enough damage to 1v1 Reckless, but it's not going to stay that way for long. And if he can pick up a Deathfire Grasp, he might extend that window, but one-on-one, -on -one, a rec eventually Reckless will just be unbeatable for this team composition, unless you have a huge burst. But in the top lane, Mozilla is actually going to be going kind of all in, both in popping the ultimates. Uh, Ice Shard comes out, but it looks like neither side is going to die. Hema Plague getting blocked out, but Mozilla looking aggressive here. Transfusion comes down. And the claw comes out, no one actually dying. Yeah, ghost pop by Mozilla though. Flash comes out from Youngbuck and he was looking for blood. No pun intended. And uh, Limited and Shuck also in that top lane. Ward will reveal them and Mozilla actually goes back in for farm. Sanguine Paul comes down dodging the dredge line. Another hook comes from Unlimited. Hook City indeed. With Ari heading up, they might be able to turn the scenario around. Looking to kind of head them off as Mozilla comes down. Dredge line will be up in about three seconds. Unlimited's... Uh, 
Death Sentence comes up in another second as well, but they ain't just going to throw out the charm and allow Mozilla to get to safety. Yeah, and Exeter is now kind of encircling the bot lane here, Reason Gaming. He doesn't want to fight them head on, I think, or apparently he does. He's going in. Yeah, Exeter just runs straight at Nargis, but with Reckless backing up as well, he can definitely go for this trade. Ward comes down for the vision, cuckooing around the side as well. Two versus three, but it doesn't even matter because Reckless does so much damage, along with Exeter hitting the unstoppable as well. And not just going to start farming his golems, Reckless there as well, with Lissandra coming in from the top side. Reckless forcing them back, but the condemn will be picking up another kill. Godlike Reckless right now, and this is just snowballing out of control. Yeah, this is looking now really, really bad once again. Vain mechanics, Reckless getting fed, 7, 1, and 5. Phantom Dancer and and, uh, and the Blade of the Rune King looking for that Shiv up next. So triple attack speed items, which is a build we're seeing quite a lot on Vayne these days. But Reason Gaming are just running out of options for how to deal with this. Vayne is now very, very strong. They can't really team fight, but she's such a strong duelist. Their split pushing potential is very weak as well. Ku may look to engage this. I'm not sure this is a vibe. Yeah, 2v3, Kofrenda comes down, locking up Unlimited, all dogpiling onto Reckless, he's still alive though, dealing out the damage, shutdown comes out, Youngbot looking to back off, doesn't land the Glacial path, Unlimited moving onto the top, will be revealed by Exler, who comes in immediately, picking up another kill, and they didn't have the Ward Vision, which is what I was trying to say, now the ultimate pop by Exler, he is looking for this kill, still has the Ignite, doesn't need to pop it just yet, Overload comes out, picking up the double kill, Nardius now trading off, Piercing Arrow comes out, Completely dry of cooldowns, and the shutdown comes out. Very messy team fight, but uh, the dog power onto Vayne was Ooh, enough top. to get them. And meanwhile, top, not shut, kind of nudges uh, Mozilani falls over. <laughs> it's one of those awkward ways to die. The unempowered Nautilus auto attack, but uh, yeah, that was. I mean. That was an aggressive play again by Kuhn. He's he is proving himself to be a very aggressive initiator throughout these games. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I was actually a little bit surprised there, but I did not account for the Deathfire Grasp. I had not noticed Bimbo 8 had picked that up. So they do have the potential to focus out Vayne if they can get the Initiate on her. And I'm actually a little bit surprised that we're not seeing guys like Jarvan carrying around a Pink Ward. I mean, he doesn't have any item slots at the moment. But if he carried around a Pink Ward, that might it might make their job a lot easier to try and focus down Vayne in these team fights. And I mean, yes, I know she only stealths for half a second or so, but <laughs> half a second is all you need. And, you know, death fire full combo would be enough to take her out. So, you know, this is kind of, I'd say, Reason Gaming's last chance. If they if they can't make plays happen now, if they can't win a few team fights soon, they're going to run into the, the end, basically, in the form of an angry vein. As it happens, though, they are pushing towards this mid lane. And Jarvan pushed out that top. They're trying to get vision control over Baron, but I don't think either team is really willing right now to go for that Baron. No, and Copenhagen was also have two incredibly strong scaling uh, carries. I have uh, Rise and Vayne, who are both in very good shape. So Reason Gaming, yes, they need to make the aggressive plays, and if they can focus down uh, Reckless, then great. But you still have Rise to deal with, and that makes it even even harder. They need to take down two carries, and Rise is going to be extremely tanky as well. So. The question is whether they have the damage to do so. They have Ari and they have Vlad. Vlad has more sustained damage and he might just not be able to survive long enough to actually output the damage in these fights. Yes, Varus. Varus going for that Bloodthirster, uh, Bloodthirster Last Whisper, so maybe looking for a bit of a poke option here. They may in fact just be looking to now try and pick people off. Um, but I've got to say their picking potential is probably not going to be as strong as Copenhagen Wolves with the Thresh, with the Northless, with the Lysandra. They might be able to catch out someone like Nautilus, though, going in now. Yeah, Flag Drag comes out along with the Cataclysm onto Exler, but with Reckless and Unlimited turning up, they need to back up. Mm. Hook comes down securing a kill. A Teleport comes in from Youngbook as well. Five Man pushed down the mid lane, and Reason Gaming, even if they are aggressive, it always backfires. Back on their heels right now. Vayne actually tanking out that tower, which isn't ideal for her, but Ari is committed to top, and that is going to be a free middle tower. Well, that's that free kill there, so yeah, it just isn't working out for them. They're kind of getting red a little bit. They knew, uh, Copenhagen Wolves knew that Reason Gaming were going to go for that aggressive initiate there, and they planned around it. They got, you know, they baited, essentially, with Exeter just sitting there. Ooh, cooey, I'm a little rise sitting here on my own in mid lane. Ah, I die! But as it, as it happens, um, 
essentially Copenhagen Wolves are predicting the, the only plays that Reason Gaming can make at this point, but they are predicting them, and that means that Reason Gaming have to be so, so careful about when they engage, but they can't afford to be, because if they do get so careful, then Rectus is just going to get even more farmed, and they'll lose the late game. Yeah, so they can't make the aggressive plays because they'll lose them, and they can't turtle because they'll lose. So, right now, they just have to pull something amazing. They have to make a god-tier play. But because Copenhagen Wolves aren't allowing themselves to open up into these into these plays, then they don't need to do anything right now. All they need to do is just... All they could... Well, they, what they could do is just farm their jungle, and they'd still win. So... It's really just down to see if Reason Gaming can get a pick, but again, the pick, as you said, could just be a bait from Copenhagen Wolves. They've set it up several times, and we've seen it uh, several times this game, and Limited looking for that hook to come down. Still has the hook coming out, but Youngbuck drops the Frozen too. No one else to back him up as well. Hemo play comes out. Mozilla doesn't quite have the damage, but he might still escape. Glacial Path comes down. Youngbuck finishes him off with the Ice Shard. Then away from the side with Kazmic. Double kill comes out. This is good for Reason Gaming. See if they can make something come of it. Yeah, but lacking that uh, Ari ultimate, they probably will be able to make too much of it. It will be quite difficult for them to focus down Reckless, but yeah, that's a bit of a windfall, catching out that overcommitment there. Uh, that cost them Mozilla, yes, and now they can look to pressure Towers, but they're going to have to contend with the Rise ultimate, which will clear at least one wave, and Lysander and Thresh will respawn relatively soon. Home Guard is an option. Shook actually getting caught out in the mid lane. Yeah, Shook just walked into them and died. <laughs> Oh, he was lag apparently, because um, yeah, that was one of those interesting plays if that was intentional, but yeah, it, it definitely indeed did look like lag. So, picking up another kill, uh, currently 4 versus 5, um, even though that was a lag kill, they could still make something happen, because without that initiation from Shuck and that front line as well, they might be able to either go for a team fight or at least take a turret. Yeah, challenger plays right there, but <laughs> um, slightly unfortunate. Exila looking to get aggressive on Bimbo here and will not be able to do so. He's very, very fast, actually. Um, slightly surprised, but he's caught Bimbo here and I can't see him surviving. He might do so. Going to be jumping out of there if he can. Has popped that ultimate. Actually gets the focus down and takes Rise out. Yeah, that's another kill. That's what, four kills on the bounce right now, or even five? Because they're just constantly being caught out. This is basically perfect scenario for Reason Gaming. However, they need to get objectives. It's, it's fine getting these kills, and they are uh, kind of encroaching on gold. But that's only, what, one to two K at maximum? And then they need to get these towers to actually make something kind of hit home and um, stick. Because Shuk is on the front lines once again. He might lag into them, but who knows? and Unlimited's there as well. They do have the hooking potential. And recent gaming, just I'm surprised they're not just grouping up and trying their best to just at least whittle down the turret. Yeah, but they're so scared of that engage because even in like a three on four situation, if Shook is able to get the initiate properly, is able to, you know, force Nardius to not put down much damage, if Vayne is hanging around, that gives them so much potential to make stuff happen. And it's so, so scary. You have to be so afraid of that initiate. But if you don't, as you say, make stuff happen, uh, if, if you don't make stuff happen, I excuse my England, but if you don't make stuff happen while you have, uh, you know, an advantage, if you stop having that advantage, well, you know, late game team, high scaling, very good players, it's you, it's not going to go well for you if you don't. Yeah, these opportunities aren't going to keep opening up essentially for Reason Gaming, and that's why it's surprising to not see them capitalize when they do get that, um, that pick or that opportunity, and even if it does backfire, at least they tried. But at the moment, it's just them not doing anything. It's like, well, we got a pick, great, let's go farm our jungle again. And that doesn't get anything done. It essentially just it prolongs the game. And prolonging the game, as we've already discussed, favors uh, Copenhagen Wolves considerably. So, okay, they get the picks, but it doesn't, it literally has no effect on the game. Yeah, but, uh, well, as it happens, Ari is hanging around this mid lane looking for the pick and will not get it. But uh, Young Buck does actually have to be a little bit alarmed at the moment. He does and he does have his Zonias though, so uh, maybe just looking to force that out, maybe looking to get that follow-up. But uh, certainly Bimbo8 has the right mindset here. If they can get those picks on guys like Lissandra, that could be good. Reckless is being forced now away, and I think Jarvan has predicted where he's going to be, but I'm not sure he wants to 1v1 Reckless right now. Even no, 2 he No, if he does have the follow-up though, and some CC behind him, he might be able to get the pick, but 
Reckless now rejoined with his team. They are looking for this fight to happen. Shook follows up with the direct line, lands onto Kazmik. Riptad comes out as well. And the follow up from the rest of his team. Reckless just on the back lines. Rosilla is trying his best along with Bimbo A, but Deckard comes out. So, so much CC. And they just can't shut down Reckless. The damage is now coming out. And <laughs> just decimates the entire lineup. Bimbo 8 is still alive. Reckless is still alive along with Limited and Shook. They want this Baron to happen, they definitely have the damage, and they are fairly low. Hook lands onto Bim away, and this is surely the ace. Perfect hook coming out from Unlimited, another pick, 5 for 2, and the Baron. I actually really don't like that, um, that Copenhagen Wolves went for that Baron there, because I think that could have backfired for them really, really badly if that hook from Tresh hadn't landed unless they took into account when making that call that there were no wards in the area for Reason Gaming because if they, I mean, you know, Challenger tier players and they're a very good team so I assume they probably did but um, if they had not landed that hook there and if they had not relied on the fact that Ari had no, uh, no vision the magic damage amplification from Baron plus the fact that Bimbo is probably the strongest man on Reason Gaming right now apart from maybe Nardius that could have gone really, really bad considering how low on health they were. But as it happens, it works out. They pick up that Baron. Uh, only, you know, uh, three members have it, but that's still going to be significant, especially considering that uh, Reckless, for some reason, seems to have that Baron buff, and that is going to be very, very scary. When he's gone back to pick up another item or so, got 2,000 gold in his pocket, so we can expect to see him pick up um, well, possibly a Mercurial Scimitar, but I wouldn't like it if he did. He may go for that Infinity Edge. Yeah, he might well do. And yeah, in fact, the Infinity Edge just straight picked up from the BF Sword. So, Mercurial Scimitar is is a good item, but you don't get the speed bonus if you're ranged. And also, uh, it's extremely inefficient. Like, the passive has to be worth something crazy, like 2k or something, for it to be efficient. So, that's placing a lot of value on it. At the same time, Quicksilver Sash is very useful, but uh, very golden efficient if you upgrade it. It's just like a slot filler at the end of the game. So... Shook and Reckless in the front, in that middle, but before I can even say anything at all, Final Hour gets popped, free shot in Kazmich, moving on to Nardia as well, look at the damage, free shots Nardia as well, cool there, free shots come out, dropping him to 50% HP, double kill comes out, and this might just be e either the inhibitor or massive damage to the base right now, all based on Shook and Reckless' play in mid lane. In fairness, he got three crits in a row, but in fairness, again, he's got about 70% crit chance, so it's not <laughs> that surprising that he did. And yeah, it turns out if you have an absolute ton of damage, you will completely kill someone with no defensive items. That is just so much damage, and that is just the death. That is. That is the peril that Reason Gaming are in right now. They are now behind 12k gold, the Baron buff on Vayne is so scary, and the Initiate is coming in. Yeah, Death Touch comes out along with the Death Sentence, again just deleted by Reckless. He's 15 and 2, godlike once again for the second time in this game. Rune Prison comes out, Mozilla drops immediately, double kill comes out. And Nardius is back on the scene, but he's gonna have to play, um, like, play amazingly to what, essentially one versus five. Flash comes down, following up onto Shook, but he has nowhere near the damage of Reckless, and this could definitely be the game. Final hour comes up once again. Kazmich there, Dreadline lands, and just decimates Ku. It's like his armor just isn't even there. Frozen Tomb comes out as well. Legendary Reckless. Kazmich's last one standing. GG, well played. I would like to give a shout out to Unlimited there for two things. One of them is really good and one of them is really bad. Uh, he gets the Darwin Award at the end there for tanking the tower and dying of it. Uh, actually giving Nardius a, a consolation kill at the end, which he may not even have noticed he got because he did the damage ages ago. But regardless, uh, the other thing is that Unlimited has actually pulled out some really, really good Thresh mechanics this game. I mean, he's been pulling all kinds of stuff, you know, doing the old hook and pull in while putting the lantern back, which pulls someone all the way to the end of the hook pull. But uh, stuff like that. So really, really solid plays, but also gets the Darwin Award. So uh, yeah, nicely played there by Copenhagen Wolves, taking the series 2 and 0. Oh, Reason Gaming coming out with some good plays, but also a few messy engages, which really got capitalized on by Copenhagen Wolves and allowed them to play that late game comp that they really love to, protecting Reckless so, get, so he gets to almost full build. And I think we will have another best of three coming up relatively shortly after this, so don't go anywhere. This should be a good one as well. I think it's X and Nexus versus, oh, smart people. That was it, who are X giants. So uh, 
Uh, that's it from me today, but I think you'll be seeing Pulse and Metas after the break. We'll see you in a bit.